Take care of Mike. I'm Kevin. This is Wyvern Blazewood, a.k.a. Why Not, with Streetwear Live, and I have with me here today Kevin M. Car Thomas Carpool and Mike Carnell, two musicians here on Second Life. Welcome, Kevin and Mike. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. I'd like to ask you guys, uh, how, when, and why did you two hook up and start collaborating in Jewel Street? It was magic. Um, my memory is terrible. Mike, what was the year we started doing this? Do you remember? Was it 2012, I guess? Yeah, I think it was 2012. Um, the, um, I, I've seen Mike perform around, and I've been at this since 2007. And, um, you know, we suggested, hey, let's let's try this dual streaming thing. And, uh, I mean, it just, it just worked amazing. It was just, Mike, um, 
Mike has an incredible ability to deal with my random song choices, and I may stop in the middle of a song or start jamming in in the middle of a song, and he'll just he's he's right on it, and uh, it it just like from the very beginning, it's just been, it's really been just awesome, and uh, it was just the year I was struggling with because I was <laughs> I was thinking about this for a while. What year was it that we started? Uh, but uh, it's it's just it's just it's really fun. It's just been really great. Yes, it is. Okay, I'm gonna uh, ask you first, Kevin. How mm -hmm. long have you been creating and playing music in real life? The best of my knowledge, I think it was like back in the '80s. It was like when I had a high school band. I think it was called White Angel. If my memory serves me. So it was a long time, um, and that's where m most of my roots are in, like classic rock and original stuff back then. So what I would you, say. Mike? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought that, you were. Thinking. That's okay. That was yeah. That's that's when it started. Mike, how about you? I started playing music in 1991. So it's just a while back too. <laughs> Long mm -hmm. time ago. <laughs> well, um, are you? Have you been in bands as well? Did you have a band? Or play yes, by I'm yourself? Playing, I'm playing in a jazz band, but I play just guitar and the band. Cool. Cool. All right, well, back to you, Kevin. Um, how and when did you first discover Second Life? So back in 2003, I was signed to an indie record label out of Hollywood. Um, I did a solo album, and then I, after the solo album, there came a band project called Nixon Nation. We did a lot of regional touring up in, down the, uh, the East Coast. And then around 2007, um, I don't know, it was either shortly thereafter, but like, the smoking thing in the bar started to go away and the economy started to fizzle a little bit. So a lot of the bars that had bands um, really started to dry up. They, they either went to like the bigger, bigger cover bands um, where a lot of the smaller, they would switch out the cheaper like DJs without getting boring into the money aspects of what the money we used to make as a band compared to where it was going. Mm. One of my fans, um, was Mama Norfolk in World. And she suggested this thing called Second Life, where you perform and make money in this universe. I said, it's the craziest. I said, what are you drinking? I mean, this is silliness. <laughs> How can you possibly make money and, and do this in a virtual world and talk to people all over the world? I thought she was crazy. And uh, sure enough, uh, she brought me in World, helped me get set up, get me set up with a stream. And I performed at her, uh, she managed a club called The Lava Pit. Back in October of 2007, my, my U.S. day was like two days ago, so <clears throat> or yesterday. And um, happy U.S. Uh, day! Oh, thank you. <laughs> and uh, and then uh, thank you. And then ever since then, I've really been performing a couple times a week. Very cool. How about you, Mike? Um, how and when did you first get into Second Life? Oh, a friend from from Skype. Uh, Invites me to to Second Life, and yeah, we, we just uh, explored uh, Second Life, and then we went to uh, to some some live music, and I just said uh, this can't be can't be live, and uh, then the singer uh, replied to me, and I was like, wow, this is live, it's really cool. You know, actually, that's how we came here too, through friends and Skype. I bet a lot of people here have. Cool. Um, back to you, Kevin. Um, was your purpose in coming to Second Life basically to expand your musical um, career uh, and the people you could reach, or did you come here and then you saw the possibility? I think you already kind of answered that. Right. No, I actually came here to perform, and yeah. I mean, I I was blown away that in just about real time you can perform with people all over the world and interact. In a way, it, it's. It's, I almost like it better than real life performing because the audience in real life performing, I mean, they can speak amongst themselves if you're real close to each other, but uh -huh. you can definitely not communicate with the performer. But here, it's it, and, uh, we take it for granted, but the audience can participate with the performer. Yeah, that's true. And that's true. huge because it they is. feel more a piece of the, of the performance, I think, and the performer feels more... I think it's a more intimate setting, performing in virtual worlds, personally. 
I never thought of it that way, but you're you're absolutely right. What about you, Mike? Was your purpose in coming to Second Life for your musical career, or, or did you come here first and then see that you could expand your musical career? Yes, I, I didn't plan anything. I just was so surprised by the possibilities of Second Life and later with the dual streaming and the multi streaming with other musician, musicians. Yeah. So basically you came here and then you, you found out you could do that here. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, Kevin, <clears throat> what are some of the other social media that you use to communicate with or connect to your following, like Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, any of those things? Actually, those, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, Google+, um, and then my website, herekevin.com. And Mike and I have experimented with, like, SoundCloud and what was it, the 69, Mike? Is that what it was called? The yep. 61. And uh, a, a various um, – there was one time I tried the video performing – but again, it, it, you're not in that virtual environment. So, um, but back to your point, yeah. I mean, definitely like Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, Google Plus, SoundCloud. Uh, you both use pretty much the same stuff then, Mike? I use Facebook and the 61.com, SoundCloud and the feminism. That's, that's all I use. Okay, okay. Well, Kevin, from seeing just a few of your shows, it's obvious you're very diverse with your songs and music talents. Can you tell a little bit about your music, particularly about your original songs? So the originals, starting off, I did a lot of um, like rock, acoustic sort of originals. I, I, then I did some more for writing for licensing, some country originals. Um, my voice does not fit that, but I did it more for licensing. So... I would write and release something so that could be used by another musician and we created and I would get royalties. Um, but hmm. where I'm at now is I'm doing a lot of like, I would say like Bon Scott, ACDC inspired original rock. That's kind of my re recording project now um, from a recording perspective rather than performing, but from a recording perspective, that's where I'm at right now. Well, you work together a lot. So, Mike, do you pretty much follow that same style of music? Or do you yeah, have some I, I play, of your own? I play different styles of music from, from rock to blues, uh, some funk, some soft rock. And, uh, yes, I, I like my original songs as well. And they're special to me because I've written them and composed them by myself. Wow. And it makes me happy, makes me happy when other musicians like Kevin and Edward Lowell cover my songs or play along. That's really cool. I like. Very cool. Very cool. All right. Well, Kevin, your, um, your music career certainly must take up a lot of your second life time. Do you do live shows in real life anymore at all? And if so, are they just locally or do you travel around to do them? They're, they're locally. I do maybe one or two a year. Um, and a lot of it is just to be honest, the money that we used to, I used to make is just not there today. You're, you're still looking you know, only a couple hundred dollars per like a gig versus what it used to be before, significantly more. Yeah. Um, and with the effort, because you got to remember, I mean, you have all your gear, you have all your setup. Um, you're looking at about a good six to eight hours. Mm -hmm. Roughly, I mean, to be honest, and for, for the amount of money out there, now again, certain people can make it if you're if you're a major cover act and whatnot doing certain things. But uh, for me, I do maybe one or two a year. But I really I'm into the virtual worlds. This is really where my interest is. This is the future. Is cool. you know, as people continue to be even in a workplace more remote, you're going to find more and more virtual experiences. And and this is this is really the future. This is where my my focus is. I think that makes a lot of sense. What about you, Mike? Um, you do any real life live shows? Yes, I do have shows in life with my band, but we play a very different music. We play jazz, oh. and we basically play around in and around uh, Hamburg, Germany. Oh. Yes, but it's traveling in real life is, is uh, special with your music gear. Yes, to 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 uh, carry it is very heavy, and mm -hmm. it takes a lot of time to set it up. And uh, yeah. The same as, as Kevin said, and we, we, we don't get much money anymore if you play in real life. You often play just for fun or just for tips, and you know, that's not that cool anymore. Yeah. yeah. How often do you do something like that, little jazz gig? How many times just, a year, just, maybe? 
just a, a few a few gigs, maybe five or so per year. Okay. But still fun. Yeah, they are fun, but it is a lot of work. It's like yeah. I'd rather have a picnic in my backyard than lug it all up to a mountaintop. You know? <laughs> all right. Kevin, um, can you share with us one of your most memorable Second Life moments from your early days here? Could be something funny, funny, fun, scary, a uh, proud moment, anything that stands out. I, in your honestly, mind. I would have to say more something more recent. I, mean, I actually met Mike in person this year uh, when he came oh. to uh, DC, and then uh, we went to and we did a big Second Life jam at Edward Lowell's. Um, that was honestly the most awesome experience. I mean, we had people like Batman. I don't know. I know I'm going to miss somebody. So Mike, I know we had Bat Masters, Edward Lowell, Max Clean. We had EZ. Um, who am I missing? Yeah. Just a bunch of musicians from SL. And it was just, I mean, we were all in the same room performing on Second Life. And it was just cool. really, really awesome. Well, Mike, do you feel the same way? Is that your one of your best moments in Second Life? Yes, that's right. It's a, the moment when I want to meet people for the first time from, from Second Life. Uh -huh. uh, I've met a I mean, writer back in 2013. And yeah, we, I always knew him from, from Second Life, and then he stood in front of me, and I heard his voice, and uh, wow, I knew your voice when I don't know you in, in real life. That's really amazing a little bit. <laughs> that that's is cool. cool. It is. <clears throat> All right. Well, Kevin, other than your uh, music events, what are any any other activities in Second Life that you enjoy, or do you even have time to enjoy anything else? The problem is with my real life job, it's it's sometimes twelve hours a day, so it, it's very difficult. But when I do have free time, I really like to try to go to Mike shows or some other shows whenever I have some free time. Uh huh. Uh, I would say that. Yeah, that's a lot a long work day. That's for yeah. sure. How about you, Mike? Yes, sir. I do like to, to explore Second Life and sometimes go shopping and also enjoy chatting with my friends on Second Life. But that's what I like. Yeah, I like to sit around and play games with my buddies. All right, well, <laughs> um, Kevin, would you yeah. share with the audience information about your group and how they can find where and when your events will be performed? And I guess that would go for both of you, um, yeah, so one at a time. Mine are at herekevin.com, like H-E-A-R, Kevin.com. I have all my gigs posted there um, and I also post them on my Twitter my Facebook and things like that but the herekevin.com is a central place for I can okay I think uh, Nick will also post them on this video and how about you Mike it's yes, on facebook.com slash mike.carnell and uh, the 61.com mike or carnell and I'm going to post uh, my SoundCloud link and Fellism link on my Facebook. So you can Excellent. Find it. If you could make a note card for Nick with those written down on that and hand it to him, he'll try to stick that on this uh, little clip here. Can you do that for us? Will do. Thank you so much. Is there anything that either of you would like to add about music in Second Life, the future of music in Second Life, uh, yeah. or whatever? Yeah, I'd like to, I'd like to jump on this. Um, when you talk about the future of music, I think it gets a little scary or controversial or whatnot. I, I think music, I, I think we are at the beginning of virtual music rather than a lot of people see ebbs and flows in Second Life, people coming and leaving. I think we're at the beginning of this. I think it's going to take, honestly, a decade or so for all of this to continue to evolve. But I think music is, as as more and more musicians who uh, ultimately write their own music and realize today that even commercial radio is starting to take a back seat toward Spotify and streaming services where mm -hmm. anyone can get involved in, in getting your material on iTunes, Spotify, and those technologies go forward. I think people, musicians, and even performing musicians are going to look at virtual platforms and say, you know what? Maybe this isn't so strange. You got to remember, back in the 80s, if you had a computer, like a Commodore or something, you were kind of geeky or nerdy or weird. Like, <laughs> why, you know, you're weird, you have a computer. Well, you got to think about that. That's, I think, where we're at. I think this is going to be the mainstream. There are other platforms. Um, Lind Linden Labs, of course, has their future platform of Sansar and uh, Philip Rosedale's with High Fidelity. But Second Life, I think, will continue. Um, 
to also be independent. And they're going to be different technologies. So mm -hmm. I think all three are going to have a place. But I, I think, um, you know, I think it's just, I think we're just at the beginning of all of this. Yeah. That's encouraging. That's yeah. good. Mike, anything to add to that? Oh, no. I enjoy the possibility in Second Life to, to perform in front of people from around the world. So I could play for Americans, for people from England, UK, from Australia. That's, that's really, really cool what I, what I enjoy. Excellent. Yeah. Well, this has been Why Not with Kevin M. Thomas Carpool and Mike Carnell. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here with us today. Taking time out of your busy days. Thank you, Why Not. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Oh, no. <laughs> no one knows what it's like to be the bad man, to be the sad man, behind blue eyes. No one knows what it's like to be hated, to be hated, telling